It's a very long story. I don't know where to start. I think uh, the person behind of camera is, you know, uh, uh, the one who is doing the click. Also, the background, you know, it's important also to bring, you know, in, in the story. I started photography actually uh, without going to school, you know, and uh, I was born in a small place. Uh, there was no school of photography anyway. And simply my, my cousin uh, had a, a Zenith camera and we started to do photography and once in a while I was asking him to give me the camera and they were taking photos. And but after a while, I was very curious about this magic of photography. And uh, as a young teenager, you know, 16 years old, I really wanted to devote myself to photography and to be a photographer. But the facility, you know, and I didn't have camera. I remember, you know, the same age, you know, maybe 16 or 17, I participated in a, a, a photo contest. You know, it was. It was every year there was there was a contest in everything so photography was one part when I was going there I didn't have camera <laughs> I, uh, certainly the big part of my my father because he didn't want me to do photography and he, he, he was thinking what is this you know you want to be a photographer this is nothing you know you should be a doctor you should be a uh, I don't know a pilot you know a scientist you know look at your brother you know he wants to be a Business, you know, and this and that, and uh, so it was very difficult to start, you know. And my father was really upset about it, you know. And that year, even though I didn't have a camera, and I found, you know, something to do the photography, the, the contest, but I became third in the province. But then, then they chose me for 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 a uh, camp to go for a month among the other students. But my father said, "No, you're not going. Your brother is going because he's good in physics and that." Anyway, so but but that was that was also another another point of uh, very important point to say you know to my father no I will do this and I will quit the school and I will work a year buy a camera for myself you know and, and then I will be a photographer after you know a couple of years the other side of you know my life started to to be important I was on focus. It was politics because, you know, uh, uh, when I was a teenager, it was just the beginning of all this uprising and intellectual movements, movements, you know, and all kinds of things in the country. And obviously, my generation started to also be attracted, you know, by politics, you know, reading books and poetry and literature and this and that. And I, same time, you know, I started to read and also being in law. And as we know, we did the revolution. <laughs> On 1979, I was very young when the revolution happened, but also... Oh, 20? 20 I was, something? I was 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, we did the revolution, actually. My generation did the revolution. And, uh, but uh, unfortunately, the revolution was hijacked by fundamentalist, you know, religious people. And the goal and the aim of the revolution change, you know, at the night of revolution. And as we know, also the big superpower they help, you know, the religious leader. So at one point we lost, you know, the revolution was defeated anyway, just at the night of revolution. Yeah. So uh, for years we were challenging this new government and obviously I was on, on the front for uh, freedom and uh, I ended up in prison three times mm -hmm. and the last time was, well, was when I was in Iran and, uh, and then I escaped. So this was the background. So, uh, but just to just get to, to the question, I think the important part was this because for years I was a political activist. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I was among those who were fighting for, for freedom, for justice, for uh, having a better world. So I think this this is very important, you know, to shape, you know, my my being, you know, my my ideas, you know, and I think this is something which is related to what I have done later on. So uh, after that. I was political refugee in Pakistan for a year. I went to Canada and it was, I think, a year after that, so I could start to think, oh, maybe this is the time because I was too far and we were, I was still doing some political activity, but I started to focus on going to school, and seriously, and, and then I finished a, a college of photography professional photography in Canada and that's the beginning of story. <laughs> mm, who are some photographers that you draw inspiration from? Do you have any? Uh, I think uh, from the beginning I was uh, I was very uh, curious by the work that Louis Hines, you know, and I think still is one of the uh, one of the uh, very important photographer for me uh, because of the body of the work uh, he has done at the beginning of the century. So, so f for the same reason, you know, uh, I think he had influence on my photography, knowing or not knowing. And uh, I think this is one of the. Photographer that I like, you know, August Sand, mm -hmm. and you know some other photographer that I like their style of photography. But the major, I could say, Eugene Smith, Hines, you know, and August Sand. Sometimes it's, it's difficult to be hidden because I shoot with with wide angle lens, so I'm I'm very close to the subject. So. Uh, but it depends, you know, if you are in Mexico City or you are in a war, you know. And when when you are in the middle of all this disaster, so people, they notice you and they don't, you know, because there are so many preoccupations, you know, to be away from one person, you know, anyway. Uh, but uh, it depends, you know, like in different, different projects, you know, sometimes you, when you shoot with the subject, you know, you know, in a location, so the subject is aware of you know, what you do. But I, I, I always try to be, uh, you know, very close contact with my subject. You know. So I'm not far from my subject. I'm just like two, three feet far. So uh, it's it, also when when you do this kind of photography, it's not easy to be hidden, you know, because you're just next to your subject, you know. But uh, I try sometimes to be. <coughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but evidently you are an emotional kind of photographer, I think. And photography has become an essential element in your life, but uh, do you think of yourself as an artist? And if so, what is the nature of your art? Um, I mean, what is the nature of the dialogue uh, you hope? to have with your viewers? Uh, well, the, about the emotional part, I think you, you're right, because uh, as I explained to you, I'm coming from a background that I had, uh, I explained it to you, and <clears throat> I, I try to use photography, you know, as a medium, that I could express myself and maybe sometimes express others who cannot explain themselves or they don't have a voice to explain to, to express themselves. So uh, and, and also I can't detach myself from my subject. This is this is very essential. So I think you know beside of you know whatever but also, I consider myself a humanist, you know, so I can't, I can't abuse my subject. So I have, I, I have, I'm always attached to my subject, and uh, if there is a, if there is a chance, 
that to to have a human contact after you know the first click and after so I will I will carry that relation you know not for a day or two for years you know, anyway and this is happening sometimes you know and I could convey that uh, I think about the second part of the question if photography is art I'm an artist <laughs> that's a question of 100 years of 150 years of uh, uh, of, of conversation and I I think photography is our and it's a it's a huge you know argument you know I think today you know it's not anyway it's it, it was an argument you know but uh, for this part I think I don't I don't need to give a title to myself you know who am I and what I do I prefer to be Babak, you know, and, and it's for the rest, I think, to figure it out. If I'm an artist, I'm an artist. I, I, I introduce myself to people, this is Babak Solari. Yeah. <coughs> so I don't go around and say that I'm, I'm an artist. I'm, if they ask me what you do, I explain. Yeah. But I think, uh, as I have a respect, you know, for the rest of the society, so they are equal equal to me and I'm equal to them, so I introduce myself as a person. How important is gear to you? No, it's not very important. It is... I believe so. <laughs> it is. I think, you know, uh, it is important and it's not important because uh, it, I remember there was a time that, you know, I would go to Afghanistan with five, six bodies of camera, but now, you know, these days, you know, I, I use a Holga camera, and plastic camera, you know, and also I use, I have all kinds of gears, but uh, gear is, is tool, you know, it's like uh, for a cook in, in, the, in, the, in the kitchen, for a driver who drives a car. So I think what is, what is important is the vision, uh, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the frame. It's the way that you, you take a photo. It's not important what gear you use. I could take a photo with a $200 uh, dollars Nikon camera that I could do it maybe with a roll of film. Same thing with the $10,000 camera. So it's, it's only the facility. In your history as a dedicated photographer, what do you think is your greatest accomplishment? My greatest accomplishment? Oh my God! <laughs> <Do you>, <laughs> Create this accomplishment. I I don't know. Uh, I I think I don't have an answer for this question. You know, to be honest. But I think uh, when I uh, look of, at what I have done, you know, and I see the reaction and reflection of the others, you know, uh, in real life not the critiques, you know, reviewing in, 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 the, uh, in the newspaper, magazine or books. Uh, when I go here and there and I see that, you know, people, they see that the things that we could do together, because I never do things alone, so I do it with always lots of different people. Uh, I think if, if that's accomplished, if, if I could say anything about accomplishment is this that I could connect with people, I could bring their voice on, I could, uh, I could uh, just add maybe a millimeter on life. So maybe this, uh, you know, if this is accomplishment, maybe I have done one millimeter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you have traveled to so many countries around the world. Uh, which of your trips in what country will you, will you never forget? Oh, uh, I should think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, which trip exactly or, you know? No, let's say which country. Which, which country is, is giving? Uh, I think there are two countries, you know, uh, specifically that after all this traveling, you know, somehow it has a focus on my life. Mm -hmm. It's Bulgaria and Cuba. Yeah. You know, and, and also it's it's very uh, 
uh, amazing that you know I explained this before you know that you know the generation of my father they were attached to Cuba mm -hmm. because of all those revolutionary aspects of you know Iranian revolution and Cuban revolution you know, before but also uh, I didn't follow that you know but Bulgaria also has a tie to Cuba you know like historical tie which was 50 years of political you know ties and without planning planning or without even thinking about this I end up in Bulgaria for last two three years yeah. so so it's a triangle you know like Bulgaria Cuba and me I was born in Iran then I moved to Canada you know and for the last 27 years uh, and then uh, I think these two country because of their you know historical and also us as a triangle uh, in last 10 years I have been very active you know going to Cuba you know and I've been part of a bit of things that is happening and also I think the at the end of the story when I came to Bulgaria uh, in 2008 I was uh, I was very I was very uh, touched by this and by this trip and as you see so in the last uh, two, three years I'm almost in the Balkan, you know, but Bulgaria and Macedonia and a bit in Greece. Uh, so I think maybe, you know, uh, there is one element of life in Bulgaria which is attracting me and first I was curious but now I, I see that I'm attached to this part of, you know, life in Bulgaria and I think uh, I could say in, after all, you know, I'm in Bulgaria, you know, and, and I think this is one of the one of one of the things that in the last, you know, twenty seven, eight years of traveling, you know, and going around, you know, I could say Bulgaria could be one of my important country because, you know, I finally chose to come back, you know, to, to this region, you know, anyway from Canada. After after these years here, uh, do you see yourself as more of an um, outsider or an insider? I mean, here in Bulgaria. Uh, it, it depends where am I am. Okay, if I am, if I go to Ministry of Interior for visa, I'm, <laughs> I'm outsider. Yeah. But basically, you know, uh, I I said that also before that uh, when I came to Bulgaria, there was a acceptance from the ground you know so I felt that the ground is accepting me here mm -hmm. so whenever I have that feeling no matter what if something is happening beside so I feel that I'm inside but you know like obviously it's you know when when I look at it it's not easy to say that you know I am outsider or insider but it again it depends you know like I got involved lots of you know cultural activity mm -hmm. here. I know. I've been part of you know events here. So I'm getting more and more closer to the fact that you know I, I, I mean for, for some reason in the last two three years that I have been off and on here, I think I have been more active than some twenty years in Canada in terms of cultural activity. So I think you know I'm in and out. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Do you plan on staying in Bulgaria in definitely? Well, I, I like to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I like to stay. Uh, I think there are many good good things that, you know, have been, I should say there are many richness in this country so that we don't see it, you know, in the first glance. Uh, and I think it's very important, you know, to, to see that. And for one, especially like me, a person who left, you know, about 30 years ago, and I never went back, it's important to see that where in the world there is a spot that you can connect better. So I think these are the things that, you know, like, happen. So I have been here for the last, you know, three years. And I think this connection happened and happening and it's continuing. So this rupture which happened, you know, like 30 years ago, and I was traveling all around, you know, and I think 
there is a good sense of acceptance, you know, yeah. here. But mm -hmm. I have been also very privileged, you know, among my friends and those who were supporting me in the last two, three years. Yeah. Janet 45, Manon Pikov, Yana Ivanova, other friends, you know, of, you know, uh, cultural scene here. So I think, you know, I know Petros here, yeah. you know, this is also support. So I think, you know, uh, these are the things that, you know, I, I, I should mention, you know, like, so these are the things which is, you know, important, you know, to see. So I think, you know, the acceptance is important, you know. Sometimes you are in a country for 20 years or 10 years or 15 years, but nobody knows you in your small street. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you walk, you sit in metro and young people, they come on to you and they ask you, are you back, you know, and you surprise, you know, how they know you, you know, like, so they don't see your show, they read the books, you know, and this and that. So I think it's it's very important the, to have this cultural contact, to have this human contact, okay, all over everything. And I think it's it's very important. So this is what is holding me here, you know. And I think if I had a if I had a choice, you know, I would say I'm not going back, to, you know, to North America. It is written on your website that uh, your new documentary work, Traumas and Miracles, Portraits of Northwestern Bulgaria, <coughs> sorry, is dealing with a sense of disorientation, loss, pain and yes. isolation. Yeah. To be honest, as a Bulgarian, this is a kind of hot topic here. Yeah. Uh, maybe because of too many transitions during uh, the years, social, political, etc. But uh, you're a foreigner. How did you spot this topic? Uh, well, I think, you know, this was uh, also a question that uh, when I did my first show, uh, Faces, Boys, Personals, in the national television, television, Shani asked me the question, so you have done Iraq, Afghanistan, Cuba, this and that, so what would be your topic, you know, in, in Bulgaria? I said, wait, I will show you. <laughs> So uh, uh, this this was this was the beginning, and and uh, when I came back to to, uh, to to Bulgaria the second time, which was at uh, first time was in January 2008, and then it was on May 2008, so not very far from each other. Uh, I was part of the Goat Milk Festival, uh, and. And the reason that actually I came to this country was the, one of the directors, Diana Ivanova. Uh, she invited me because of, you know, Janet 45 for a portrait of uh, uh, Pedro Juan Gutierrez for uh, his famous book here, uh, King of Havana. Uh, during the time that I was in the festival, I was in a village, as we know. Belarachka and and I started to have a conversation with Diana because we we wanted to do something together and with Diana we developed this idea to see the effect of of the changes after so many years in Bulgaria and especially because she was uh, active she was a you know cultural uh, producer you know in Northwestern Bulgaria in that region. So we started to talk about it and to see how the changes in Bulgaria uh, you know, affected the, the, the old generation of Bulgaria. So, uh, and we started to travel around, you know, we went to different villages and we started to talk to people, interview them, you know, and, and we figured out there is a sense of loss and sense of, sense, sense, a lack of, lack of, uh, connection, you know, with the past because changes happen and this uh, part of the society, they were completely oscillated because change happened but they were, they were so far from the changes and they were living, you know, in isolation. Uh, uh, so I think Diana was, was, a, was a major key for, for going around and also understanding better and also observing what is happening in Northwestern. Bulgaria. 
So I think we were the, I can say the, maybe we were one of the first, so we started to focus on this, on this subject. Uh, and and um, I think the subject itself, you know, taught us how to go around because we were observing, we were talking, we were connecting, we were seeing, and we were traveling. So this, this was the major thing. I didn't know before about it. But just getting close to the subject and going around, you know, for a while. So uh, that was the, that was the main key. And, and I think, so after almost three years, the project itself, it proves that uh, we work about this. I don't know uh, if, if I could say how, how the issue, but I could say that you know it's it's a uh, it's a very important hum, human topic because we see that sometimes people are living in those villages, uh, you know, hundred years old. The cover of you know the, the book uh, Nicola, he was hundred years old and he was living alone. So I think. Well, he was 80 years old when the changes happened, you know, in the 80s. So, but for 20 years after he was alive and he was living alone. Th this was really miracles for us, to, 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 to see that somebody is 100 years old and still, you know, being capable of, you know, living alone, you know. But at the same time, there were also other, other people who, who were completely disconnected with what was happening, you know. There, one day television change, one day news change, one day in the, all this politics change, you know, and there was no contact. This was a trauma for, for many people who were not like 20 years old or, you know, they were 80 years old, they were 60 years old. So, the, and they didn't have the chance and the facility, you know, to, to and they, they don't have the social services to, to know what's happening. So I think it was, it was very important. So from that as, aspect of the project, I think, it's a very important, you know, to... And what do you think? What is more, the traumas or the miracles? Well, uh, <laughs> I, I would like to think that miracles, you know, uh, uh, because, you know, I always, um, I'm always optimistic, even though, you know, I see all these holes and gaps. Uh, but we have to, you know, uh, also understand that, you know, when we have problematic in a society, we have to go around it and we have to focus on it, we have to bring it. So what we did, uh, we didn't predict anything or we, we didn't answer any question. We only raised some questions about, you know, what's happening and why we should, we should think about this for the future of the society. So I think, you know, it would be nice to be positive and, you know, uh, optimistic and think that the miracles, but also we have to, to look to see what happened in the last 20 years. So if we don't see the both sides, we could, you know, we could fall in, in a big hole. So I think mm, this project and also the continuity of, of this project you know, in the last three years and all this event that we have done and this other event that we are doing here, you know, in photo centers, it's it's also the continuity of the same thing to show that we have to we have to go around the same question because it was not only photography book, you know, to be, you know, beautiful or nice or ugly, but it was just to to raise some question in the society and to see that what is happening for the older to, uh, what is happening to the older generation of, of Bulgarian. So th this is, I think this is, this was an answer to that question.